good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm back again, family, with another video. Um, and uh, this video, again, one of my idols in print, in literature, and just sheer um, courage. Again, was Ida B. Wells, and it's really important that y'all know how important that she was to the culture. How she had to go into hiding because her writings were so powerful at this point in history that they wanted to bound, they wanted to shut her down because again, the pen was mightier than the sword, and Ida B. Wells uh, was a living embodiment of that statement. But uh, this is one of her articles that she wrote, and it was called "Lynch Law in America," um, and she wrote this in 1900. Our country's national crime is lynching. It is not the creature of an hour, the sudden outburst of uncontrolled fury, or the unspeakable brutality of an insane mob. It represents the cool, calculating deliberation of intelligent people who openly avow that there is an unwritten law that justifies them in putting human beings to death without complaint, under oath, without trial by jury, without opportunity to make defense, and without the right to appeal. The unwritten law first found excuse with the rough, rugged, and determined man who left the civilized centers of the eastern states to seek for quick returns in the gold fields of the far west. Following an uncertain pursuit of continually eluding fortune, they dared the savagery of the Indians, the hardship of the mountain travel, and the constant terror of border state outlaws. Naturally, they felt slight toleration for traitors in their own ranks. It was enough to fight the enemies from without. Woe to the foe within. Far removed from the entirety without protection of the courts of civilized life, these fortune seekers made laws to meet their variant emergencies. Now we're talking about the early Americans, right? The thief who stole a horse, the bully who jumped a claim, was a common enemy. If caught, he was properly tried and if found guilty, was hanged to the tree under which the covert court conveyed. I mean, which the court conveyed. Those were busy days of busy men. They had no time to give the prisoner a bill of exception or stay of execution. The only way a man had to secure a stay of execution was to behave himself. Judge Lynch was the original in methods of exceedingly ineffective in that procedure. He made the charge impound the juries and directed the execution. When the court adjourned, the prisoner was dead. Thus, lynch law held sway in the far west until civilization began to spread into territories and was or and the orderly processes of law took its place. The emergency no longer existing, lynching gradually disappeared from the west. But the spirit of mob procedure seemed to have fastened itself upon a lawless class and the grim process that at first was invoked to declare justice was made an excuse just to wreak havoc, vengeance, and to cover up a crime. It next appeared in the South, where centuries of Anglo-Saxon civilization had made effective all the safeguards of court procedure. No emergency called for lynch law. It asserted its sway in defiance of law and in favor of anarchy. There, it has flourished ever since, marking the 30 years of its existence with inhumane butchery of more than tens of thousands of men, women, and children by shooting, drowning, hanging, and burning them alive. Not only this, but so potent is the force of example that the lynching mania has spread throughout the North and the Middle East.
I mean, I'm sorry, the Middle West. It is now no uncommon thing to read of lynchings north of the Macy Dixie line. And those most responsible for this fashion gleefully point to these instances and assert that the North is no better than the South. This is the work of the unwritten law about which so much is said and in whose behest butchery is made pastime and national savagery condoned. The first statue of the unwritten law was written in the blood of thousands of brave men who thought that a government that was good enough to create a citizenship was strong enough to protect it. Under the authority of a national law that gave every citizen the right to vote, the newly made citizens chose to exercise their right, exercise their suffrage. But the reign of the national law was short-lived and illusionary. Hardly had the sentences dried upon the statute books before one southern state after another raised a cry against the Negro domination and proclaimed that there was an unwritten law that justified any means to resist it. All you got to do is replace the word lynching with shooting. Okay, that's all you got to do for today. The method then inaugurated was the outrages by the red shirt bands of Louisiana, South Carolina, and other southern states, which were succeeded by the Ku Klux Klan. These advocates of unwritten law boldly avowed their purpose to intimidate, suppress, and nullify the Negro's rights to vote. In support of its plan, the Ku Klux Klan, the Red Shirt, and the similar organizations proceeded to beat, exile, and kill any Negroes until the purpose of their organization was accomplished and the supremacy of the unwritten law was affected. Thus, lynching began in the South, rapidly spreading into various states until the national law was nullified and the reign of the unwritten law was supreme. Men were taken from their homes by red shirt bands and stripped, beaten, and exiled. Others were assassinated when their political promise made them obnoxious to their political opponents. While the Ku Klux Klan bar barbarism of election days, reveling in the butchery of thousands of colored voters, furnished records in congressional investigations that are a disgrace to any civilization. The alleged menace of universal suffrage have been avoided by the absolute suppression of the Negro vote. The spirit of mob murder should have been satisfied and the butchery of Negroes should have been ceased. But men, women, children were the victims of murder by individuals and murder by mobs, just as they had been when killed at the demands of the unwritten law to prevent Negro domination. Negroes were killed for disputing over terms in, of contracts with their employers. If a few bands were burned, some colored man was killed to stop it. If I'm sorry, if a few barns were burned, some colored man was killed to stop it. If a colored man resented the imposition of a white man and the two came to blows, the colored man had to die either at the hands of the white man then, or there later at the hands of a white mob that speedily gathered. If he showed a spirit of courageous manhood, he was hanged for his pains. See, this is what happened to the alpha male, right? He, you know, remember, your job is to take all this abuse and love it. Remember, you're the scapegoat. You're the scapegoat child. You're supposed to take all this abuse and love it. And act like nothing is happening. Act like when you go out today, your reality is just the same as your white counterparts. Even though you know it ain't. But you're supposed to look and stay above all of this, right? Even though they're shooting you, your husband, your brothers, your uncles, your babies out in the streets. But remember, stay spiritual. That's how, that's the new mantra. Stay above the fray as if 
both of these don't bring a balance. How can you stay above the fray when your reality is death? How can you? You have to be one with death, but you have to speak truth to the people who are inflicting this damn domination upon you. You don't have to. You, it's not. It doesn't behoove you to act like it doesn't exist. You're not showing how strong you are. You're showing how much of a coward you are. In my humble opinion, the alleged minutes of universal suffrage have been avoided by the absolute suppression of the Negro vote. But I mean, the spirit of mob murder should have been satisfied, and the butchery of Negroes should have ceased. But men, women, and children were the victims of murder by individuals and murder by mobs, just as they had been when killed at the demands of the unwritten law to prevent what? Negro domination. Um, a new name was given to the killings and a new excuse. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, let me go right here. If the Negro showed a spirit of courageousness, manhood, he was hanged for his pains. And the killing was justified by the declarations that he was a uppity nigga. Colored women have been murdered because they refused to tell the mobs where the relatives could be found for the lynching bees. Boys of 14 years old have been lynched by white representatives of American civilization. In fact, for all kinds of offenses and for no offenses, the murders to misdemeanors, men and women are put to death without judge or jury. So that although the political excuse was no longer necessary, the wholesale murder of human beings went on just the same. A new name was given to the killings and a new excuse was invented for so long. Again, the aid of the unwritten law is evoked, and again, it comes to the rescue. During the last 10 years, a new statute has been added to the unwritten law. This statute proclaims that for certain crimes or alleged crimes, no Negro shall be allowed a trial, that no white woman shall be compelled to charge an assault under oath or to submit any such charge to the investigation the court of law. Hmm. Really? So her mouth is a prayer book. The result is that many men have been put to death whose innocence was afterward established. And today, under this reign of unwritten law, no colored man, no matter what his reputation, is safe from lynching if a white woman, no matter what her standing or motive, cares to charge him with insult or assault. It is considered a sufficient excuse and a reasonable justification to put a prisoner to death under this unwritten law. For the frequency repeated charge that these lynching horrors are necessary to prevent crimes against the white woman. The sentiment of the country has been appealed to in describing isolated condition of what of white females in thickly popular populated blah, 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 Negro districts. And the charge is made that these homes are in the are in great are in as great danger as if they were surrounded by a bunch of wild beasts. And the world has accepted this theory without let or hindrance. In many cases, there has been open expression that the fate meted out to the victim was only what he or she deserved. <sighs> In many other instances, there has been a silence that says more forcibly than words can ever proclaim that it has the right and the proper that a human being should be seized by a mob and burned to death upon an unsworn and an uncooperated charge from his accuser. See, this ain't nothing new. We've been going through this a long time, family. A long time. So much that Ida B. Wells had, again, went into hiding. These are her letters. From the early 1900s. And if I would just close my eyes and just feel it, I could feel like I'm in the year 2018. No matter what 
that no matter that our laws presume every man innocent until he is proven guilty, no matter that it leaves a certain class of individuals completely at the mercy of another class, no matter that it encouraged those tremendously disposed to blacken their faces and commit any crime in the calendar so as long as they can throw suspicion on some Negro, as frequently is done, and then lead a mob to take his life. Did y'all hear that? Because that's some Megyn Kelly stuff. Like she said she didn't understand what the problem with blackface was. No matter that it encouraged those criminally dispossessed to blacken their faces and commit any crimes in the calendar so that they can throw suspicion on some Negro, as is frequently done, and then lead a mob to take his life. No matter that the mobs make a farce on the law and a mockery of justice, no matter that the hundreds of boys are being hardened in the crime in school and vice by the repetition of such scenes before their eyes, if a white woman declares herself insulted or assaulted, some life must pay the penalty. With all the horrors and all of the Spanish Inquisition and all the barbarian barbarism from the Middle Ages. I'll be right back. 